be back. I bet. <laughs> Good morning. Welcome to Wednesday, September 27th meeting of the Board of Franklin County Commissioners. Roll call. Commissioner Sotomayor? Present. Commissioner Harris? Present. Chair Dickinson? Present. Commissioner Dunn? Present. Vice Chair Waymeyer? Present. Please rise and join me for the Pledge of Allegiance followed by the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for these leaders that you've given for this community. And we pray that these leaders would lead from a place of humility of spirit, humility of heart, charity towards the citizens and the, and the members of our community, Lord, as well as wisdom given by you. We are thankful to have leadership, Lord, and we pray that as you um, help them, would you bring your wisdom, would you bring your knowledge, would you bring the things they need to this meeting and to their, to their daily comings and goings. We praise you, we bless you, and we ask for your presence. Amen. Amen. Thank you. few pieces of correspondence and organizational business. We're going to start with Over the Road Gang. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Larry Barber. I am the president of the Over the Road Gang Car Club here in Ottawa. We just had our 36th annual Old Mary's River Run. And uh, we wanted to come out and give you guys a plaque for your, our, your guys' appreciation for helping with the car show. This Franklin County Visitor Center. We'd like to thank the commissioners for for helping us put this car show on. The Franklin County Sheriff's Department, Franklin County Ambulance Service, Franklin County Emergency Management. I'm sure there's others with the county, but we appreciate your guys' support, and hopefully we can do this again next year and use the Visitor Center. And uh, like I said, we wanted to give that appreciation back to. Uh, to the visitor center. Uh, Don, is there anything I'm missing? No. Don's in the club with me, so uh, we worked really hard on this car show that we just put on. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, we had a lot of a lot of feedback from from different ones, but uh, we've had our city meeting with the police department and those yesterday. A few changes we're going to try to make for the better for the car show. Uh, but other than that, like I said, I just wanted to come and thank you guys and give you guys your plaque. I know you said that the city, when you met with the city, that you don't have a lot of people in your club, so you were doing this with... We are 32 members, and out of 32 members, <clears throat> I'm going to go and say there's probably 12 to 14 that actually volunteer to put the car show on. But we have a lot of support from Ottawa's FFA, Central Heights <laughs> FFA, Ottawa University, uh, wherever we can get volunteers out, we usually try to get them. So, but we had a lot of volunteers come in from out of town for the police department, sheriff's department. So, might mention that what it takes to become a member if they would like to win uh, the game. Yeah, if anybody wants to become a member, uh, we'll have a meeting October the 5th at 7 o'clock at the Goppert Center. It's just an application you fill out, just has your name, address, phone number, and why you want to be in the car club. You don't have to have a classic car or even interested in cars if you're just wanting to volunteer your time. We're, we don't turn too many people away. So. Awesome. Well, I, 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 I did say last week that, like, Brian Sokoff, the city manager, this is his first. He had no idea. Yeah. Yeah, no city idea. manager was very impressed with our car show. Yeah. But it takes a lot to put the car show on. It takes a lot of support. It takes a lot of the, the police department, the sheriff's department. A lot of those guys downtown to make it run smoothly so i i told everybody at our our ending meeting of the car show you know, we're it's not just one person putting us on it it's everybody and i consider everybody as a family i mean it, it takes everybody to do this it's not an easy task it takes a whole year to plan this thing you uh, i know you're not going to go through the list of what it costs to put it on but i was even amazed the other night what does it cost them just to 
The rental of porta potties. <laughs> so through Madden Rental was just a little over seven thousand dollars just to rent the mm -hmm. porta pots. Another twenty thousand in T-shirts that we buy and sell it to show. Uh, the appreciation plaques. Those were a little over sixteen hundred dollars for the appreciation plaques. Our club is basically funded on just whatever we get for donations. A lot of footwork, a lot of phone calls, a lot of emails. You know, golf cart rentals. I think our golf cart rentals was a little over four thousand dollars. And of course, you got to figure out we're probably close to seventy thousand dollars before we even put the car show on that we're out. Wow. Well, we appreciate it. The businesses yep. and restaurants appreciate it. Uh, oh, yes. The RTG, I, yeah. Yeah. Fund appreciates it. Uh, and I think the whole county, the whole city uh, enjoys yeah. what you put on. So yeah. appreciate yeah. your hard work. With that being said, all that's right. all I have. I appreciate it. Thank you guys again, and we'll do this next year. So. Thank you. We hope you Thank will. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Um, we're going to move on. We have a report from the Ottawa Main Street Association. Um, giving some updates and request Sarah Stauffer. Stauffer? Stauffer. Good morning. I am Sarah Stauffer. I'm currently the interim director for Ottawa Main Street Association. Um, I'll give you a little rundown on the organization. We have been in a rebuild phase. Um, with that, about last August, I guess it's been a year ago in August, um, I came back on board. In doing that, we rebuilt the whole board. There was no longer a board. Um, the city had stopped funding. It is a national program as well as a state-funded program or state-accredited program. Um, in staying in accreditation, it qualifies us for different grants, um, loans. We have an IWW loan process that's an incentive with the walls that we can offer businesses. If we are not in good standing, we cannot keep those accreditations. Part of our accreditations is having a functioning board. We now have a 10-member board with three ex-officios and all of our committees have chairs. So we have four committees. Um, we have organization, design, promotions, business enhancement. Um, our biggest things are just getting people to support local or downtown businesses. We're really trying to build um, Ottawa as a go-to community for people to come to. Uh, we used your guys the courthouse lawn. That was great for us, great access. We thank you for that. We had a little over 350 attend that event at the courthouse. And it was simply just a, we called it Main Street Madness family event. Our goal when we building this is trying to incorporate more partnerships in the community. Um, because the board had been pretty much in rebuilding, we only have funding. We've been operating solely on the funding from the city. We actually had to go back and request that. It wasn't even being funded through the city uh, for a year or so. Um, with that as well, we are membership based and no memberships were being kicked out or asked for. So we took that this past year to really rebuild and we didn't feel it was right to start asking, hey, pay your dues when what we're, you know, we were really just an improve it phase. So uh, in July, we rolled out our new tiers and we are now taking dues. Uh, we currently have 33 members. We're working on getting those out there. Part of us staying in our accreditation is we have to do quarterly trainings. So. Um, I go wherever the quarterly training is. Uh, for example, our upcoming one is in October and is actually in correspondence with the tourism conference. Um, in the past, Main Street has gotten a discount for attending the remainder of the tourism conference. However, they're not giving a discount this year. Um, I will be out there for the Main Street portion of it. And at this time, I don't believe there's anybody from the community that's gonna be representing Franklin County in the tourism conference. So I'm coming and asking if I could, we could be allotted TGT funds to allow me to attend the, the rest of the tourism conference and the hotel stays out there. Sarah, what is the amount roughly that you're the, seeking? So the tourism conference itself is $275 and the hotel is $139 a night. So it would equal $553. And the rest of it that I would be there for Main Street my our board would pick up. Is this the last? Are you? This is just for one. Yeah, yeah, just how, for myself. How many are there? How many that go? No, how many? Um, 
So you say you have to go quarterly. So, this so I do four a year at least, um, but they're all covered through, like my board covers all those expenses. This is the only one that's the This is the one. only one that, and I'm not sure why, last year they teamed one up with tourism as well. And I personally was not at that one. Um, so I do think they try and team one up with tourism each year, but I don't know if that'll be the same next year or not. Um, a lot of times in ours trainings, it's a grant opportunity example or letting us know kind of what's coming down the pipeline or different things like that. We are actively uh, going after as many grants as we can. This is something that we would potentially send Christina to, but Christina is on extended leave right now. And, and so that's not something we're gonna be able to do this year. Um, I believe that Sarah would be willing to work with Christina to start promoting tourism in tandem, um, Main Street and Franklin County. So I certainly don't have any issue with this because we're not gonna be able to send anyone. So if she would like to go bring that knowledge back, work with us on future partnerships, I, I think that's great. So I have no concern, but certainly would defer to the five of you. I would also like to say that um, that's exactly was my thought when I was sitting in training and we were told about this last time is I felt like it was the perfect opportunity to form partnership, even if it was somebody from the county. That's actually how this started is I reached out and said, hey, is anybody from the county going? Could we be in communication together um, and even meet up while we're there, or travel there together, that kind of thing. Um, but building the partnerships going forward, there's a lot that we can offer each other, I feel like. There's even, we've recently been granted through the state a, I don't know if you guys have heard of the program called Placer. It's kind of a, it's a data software, but it collects data. I can tell you that, I'm still waiting on the reports, but I can tell you that last year from first through fifth, there was just under 15,000 people on Main Street for Car Show Weekend. Hmm. I can tell you um, different data collecting and stuff like that, and it's all a free software that we're allowed to use and then share onto the community. I think it's a great idea to, I mean, you, you want to make it a destination. We get people here for certain events, but then mm -hmm. the rest of the year, what do we do? Uh, and I know that there is money available out there for tourism, and we kind of leave it on the table because we don't know what to ask for. So the more eyes that we have, the more ears that we have, I, I think it's a, a great use of our funds. But what do you all think? Thankfully, <laughs> under the circumstances where we don't have, I mean, I well, maybe we would add second thought that, that Christina was able to and go, but this is somebody, we need some kind of representation. Yeah, just to reiterate, it's a one time deal uh, just this year. So not a reoccurring funding, but. Cool. Okay. Well, I don't need a motion. I can approve of that. So I will take your, this as approval and feel free. I appreciate it. And I will. Uh, give me your day or so once I get back from the conference, because usually when I come back from them, it's you're on brain overload. But um, I'll give a report back on what I hear. So and I appreciate just, it. Just just keeping track of the cities through their meetings, and and I know that Main Street is really went through a rough patch there, but I really feel like they're probably they're and it's probably the good position that they've been in for a while. So thank you, I appreciate, appreciate it. It's yeah. Um, once again, a volunteer Board. committee, and if anybody's looking for a place to volunteer, uh, reach out to me. <laughs> Lots of places to volunteer. Thank All you. Right. Thank you, sir. All right. Then we have some lovely young people in our audience because we are going to proclaim, um, designate October 1st to the 7th as National 4-H Week. Um, I'm going to read the proclamation and then... You all can come on up. Absolutely, come on up. I'm going to read the proclamation, and then if you guys have some comments, and then we'll take a picture. All right. The proclamation reads, whereas 4-H is America's largest youth development organization supporting nearly 6 million youth across the country, and whereas 4-H has helped 267 youth in Franklin County to become confident, independent, resilient, and compassionate leaders, and whereas 4-H is delivered by cooperative extension, a community of more than 100 public universities across the nation that provides experiences where young people <coughs> learn by doing through hands-on projects in the important areas of health, science, agriculture, and civic engagement. 
And whereas National 4-H Week showcases the incredible ways that 4-H inspires kids to do and highlights the remarkable 4-H youth in Franklin County who work each day to make a positive impact on those around them, and whereas 4-H's network of nearly 600,000 volunteers and 3,500 professionals provides caring and supportive mentoring to all 4-H members, helping them to grow into true leaders, entrepreneurs, and visionaries. Therefore, be it resolved that the Franklin County Board of Commissioners formally designates October 1st through the 7th, 2023 as National 4-H Week throughout Franklin County and encourages all of our citizens to recognize 4-H for the significant impact they have made and continue to make by empowering youth with the skills they need to lead for a lifetime. Signed this 27th day of September, 2023. And you are Josie Thompson. Yes. All right. Um, hi, my name is Josie Thompson. I'm the 4-H program manager for Franklin County. Um, actually, October 1st will be my one year of being here in Franklin County. Um, this is a, 4-H has been a great opportunity for me and has shot, showed me many different life skills that I have been able to use now. Um, and today with me, I have my uh, Franklin County 4-H uh, council officers, and they're each going to talk to you about why they are in 4-H. Oh, awesome. I'm Bryn Perry. Um, I'm the vice president of the county council. 4-H has been a really big impact on my life ever since I was little. My older sister was in 4-H since I can remember. So it's had a big impact on my leadership skills. And I've made so many lifelong friendships throughout 4-H and met so many new people throughout the state and had plenty of time to converse with adults and get to learn so many leadership skills like whether that's working with young kids or kids my age and even adults as well. So what kind of questions do you guys have for me about my 4-H what, um, what is your area of photography? Um, so I do a lot of different projects. I do everything from showing livestock, so I show meat goats, um, to foods and nutrition. I took some yeast rolls to state fair this year. Um, and then I love my leadership project. It's like one of my favorite things to do. Turn this bossy little girl into a good leader. So <laughs> that's awesome. All right. So, thank you. All right. Thank you. Hello, my name's Calla Higby. This is my ninth year in 4 H, and I am a member of the Apmoose Trailblazers 4 H Club, where I currently serve as the president. I'm also the secretary of the Franklin County 4 H Council. Um, so a little bit about me, um, my family raises a commercial cow-calf operation consisting of Simmental and Sam Angus cattle. My siblings and I also own and operate a 30 sow show pig operation where we raise and sell show pigs. As you probably could have guessed, I'm very heavily involved in 4-H as I show livestock all around the country. Cattle and pigs are what I show. As animal agriculture is one of my biggest passions, 4-H has been one of the main foundations in my life. It's taught me hard work, de dedication, and it's taught me how to step outside of my comfort zone. And it's told me that failure is never final and that success can be achieved through determination and hard work. The 4-H motto is to make the best better, and that's exactly what 4-H does. It, takes, it makes servant leaders much like yourselves and gives them a heart for the community. Thank you. you have any questions? We will go to college for I'm going to go to college to livestock judge. Are you going to do that at KU, aren't you? <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, we know where you're going. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Thank you. So hi, I'm Erin Livingston. I'm currently serving as the 4-H Council President, and then I'm also one of the two 2023-2024 Miss 4-Hs. I'm currently in the Rambling Ranchers 4-H Club, and I've been in 4-H for the past 11 years. Um, just one of those things, 4-H has been always just a good foundation for me. I've been in it since I was seven years old and could start in 4-H. I've done any project that can be from photography, cooking, sewing, to showing horses, doing bucket calves, anything like that. 
But one thing I just love about 4-H is I think a lot of people think 4-H is just about agriculture and the animals. And it's so much more than that. It's so much more to the indoor projects and I, like the other ones were saying is the leadership. Especially being Miss 4-H this past year, it's been able to teach me all these different leadership opportunities of uh, being able to make connections with younger kids in our community and things like that. And also teaching me these leadership skills to even be able to come up here and talk with you guys today and go into other workplace zones and be able to go into interviews and confidently say I know what I'm doing, I know what I'm talking about and not have those nerves and everything like that. So 4-H has been a really good foundation for me, helping me with my FFA, helping me with my future plans and everything like that. So it's so much more than just the ribbons. Everyone always thinks that you need to go and you don't need to win everything, but 4-H has taught me that it's so much more than that. It's not all about the ribbons, it's not all about the placings, but it's about the connections that you make, and I can say that my 4-H friends are forever, and they're always the type of people that you can always fall back on, so it's just taught me that it's not all about the winning, it's about helping other people and building each other up and learning how to work with things you have, and I just, I, it's always been what I've had to fall back on. Public speaking, is that one of your... Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it's something that it's really helped me with. I've done, it helped me a lot, especially when it came to FFA. I've gone to 4-H um, county club days and things like that and done public speak talking and then also at FFA competitions. It really helped me to be able to just come out and talk and speak my voice and learn how to do it confidently just because as a seven-year-old, I can sit here and say that if I was seven years old seeing myself right now, I'd be honestly in shock because I was the little kid that would always hide behind my mom, didn't want to talk to anybody. So it really helped me come out of my shell to be able to do this. That's awesome. Thank you. Where did the Miss 4-H bring take you? Um, so with the Miss 4-H, we were able to participate and be kind of like the leaders when it came to the county fair and then just doing other activities and things. But it really gave us the opportunity to, to connect more with a lot of the younger kids because I'd say as an older 4-H'er, you don't always get those opportunities to really get that one-on-one -on -one time with the younger kids. And you really realize how much they look up to you. Um, we, I got to help judge with the clover buds, um, the little kids that aren't old enough to be in 4-H. And you get to sit down with them, and we're the ones that interview them. So I got to ask them questions about their project and things like that. And it, it just really made that connection there so then they know that they're not alone because when you're six or seven or five even years old, they're nervous and they don't want to go to talk to somebody, but you get to be that person that they're comfortable talking to. And it's just starting that foundation just like I had and I had people to talk to and look up to. It's able to start that foundation for them too. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Laura Winger and I'm also a Miss 4-H for this year and I'm the president of our um, 4 H Club, and I'm the reporter on council. Um, and this is going to be my 11th year in 4 H, I think. And I raised Simital, Hereford, and Angus cattle. Um, we started out with Angus and Herefords, and then we've branched into the Simital breed this year, well, last year. Um, and we've really loved it. And so um, that's one thing that I've learned from 4 H is just like trying new things. Um, Growing up, it was just always Angus and Herefords, and then this year we were like, let's try some, or last year, sorry, we were like, let's try Simitols, and um, part of why we love the Simitol Association and the breed is the people, and that's why I think 4-H really brings to you is um, the people that are in 4-H, and just getting to know them and connecting with them and building those relationships, and as Miss 4-H, I feel like um, that's something I've really gone to experience this year. Um, I've had a lot of younger members come up to me and ask me for advice with their project um, and ask me just for help and things like that. And that's something I really cherish because as a really young member, I remember looking up to those older members, looking up to um, the president of our club and the Miss 4-H and Mr. 4-H and those things. Um, and just really seeing them as role models and being um, seeing those as people that like I really want to be when I'm older. Um, and at the fair, there was this um, young lady who was struggling to keep her animal, is like just acting up, is getting a little crazy. And so I went and helped her, and that was just really cool for me because um, 
We built a big connection through that, and that's something that happened to me when I was seven or eight years old. I had an animal that we brought it to the fair, had been great all year long, and then it just went crazy. Um, and so I had to have Miss Horridge help me that year, too. And so seeing that um, full circle, seeing something that I experienced, um, getting to be that for somebody else has really been super cool for me. And it's just helped me grow as a leader and learn more about the industry as a whole um, because I only uh, raise cattle, and so that is my main project and what I focus on. Um, but from my friends and from the other people in my club and the other people throughout the county, I learn more about the sheep and the pig and the goats and all the other industries um, while also getting um, to learn about what they do and um, the projects they're involved in and things like that. Who can tell me how many uh, 4-H clubs there are in Franklin County? I think there's like 12. <laughs> 12. 12? Yep, 12. Oh, wow. I wouldn't have had no idea. Awesome. <laughs> yes, there's a lot. How many uh, people up here have ever been in 4-H? Anybody? Yeah, I've been in 4-H. I mean, they would probably been at least two, a couple. Like and that. I'm not devolved in how many years? Yeah, well, I didn't even know if they had 4-H back then, but I <laughs> threw it out there. It was 3-H when Don was in it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to tell us what the 4-H is stand for? Head, heart, hands, and health. There you go. I say it's a count when you have your kids in it and you have to go through it with them. So. I was going to say, maybe you haven't been in it, but you cook a... I've been around it. Yeah, you, 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 you do a lot for them now, so that's awesome. I love to see women in leadership. Obviously, you can see that. Girls don't ever quit. You know, it's people like you that we need to be up here someday. Um, I, I, you know, you are actually becoming great leaders, so... Um, don't ever quit. Did you want to share? Go ahead. I just want to introduce myself, too. I'm Jessica Flory. I'm the 4-H Youth Development Agent for Frontier Extension District, excuse me, uh, which is Franklin Anderson in Osage County. So uh, we were able to bring Josie on board last year to be in our office as a boots-on-the-ground person for our 4-H program here in the county, but we service everybody in those three counties. So thank you so much for your support. And, you know, there's some really tough challenges facing our youth today, and I hope you guys see 4-H as a program that can help tackle some of those challenges. So thank you so much for your time this morning. And one thing I love about my job is I've seen these girls grow from 7 years old all the way to these outstanding young ladies that they are today. So uh, I love my job and the 4-H program. Thank you so much for your support. Okay, we are all going to make our way down to get a picture. We need the commissioner to do the board. Wait a second, guys. She's going to take one more. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Do we have any public comment today? No. All right. Consent agenda. I was like, we haven't done the consent agenda. Oh, yeah, we got that yet. Um, payroll approval in the amount of $1,366,670.62. Minutes from the study session on September 18th and minutes from the meeting on September 20th. Motion to approve. Do you have a second? Second. Commissioner Sotomayor? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Abstain, except for the one on the payroll. 
Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Chair Dickinson? Yes. And then we are, have only one item of business today. One, uh, it is to authorize the community corrections to modify the former juvenile services building. Uh, we did get to take a tour last Monday. That was awesome. Well, thank you, commissioners, and good morning. Um, as you mentioned, last week we toured the juvenile services building and I highlighted some um, potential renovations that we would like to make in order to house community corrections there full time. And so this morning we are asking for authorization to go ahead with those um, modifications. And I provided a, an estimate of some uh, of the cost of those renovations and I'm happy to answer questions on those and go over those in detail as much as you would like. Um, one thing I would point out is, is card readers. We have to be determined on that. We, so we've got an estimate and it's for five or six. Six card readers on three doors, correct? Six card readers on three doors. It's like 40,000 bucks. So I told him we've got to find a, a different solution. I think some of it is that our system over there is proprietary and it's outdated and should have never been implemented in the first place in all likelihood. But to have readers that fit that, it's going to be pricey. So I know Dustin and I both are hoping that we don't have to resort to that. But we pulled that just because we're going to continue to explore options. We will come back again. Maybe that will be the solution, but regardless, we'll come back again for that. So one of the things we talked about, we kind of talked about maybe what the estimates were, but we didn't really talk about where that funding was going to come from. Yeah, it can come from um, capital outlay. It can come from um, Janet, forgive me, I don't have the name, one of our two big reserve funds. It can come from there. I'd probably recommend that it come from one of our reserve funds. And we are already spending quite a lot of money out of our capital outlay fund this year for the software project and some other things. So I'd probably recommend that it comes out of one of our um, two major capital outlay funds, which are reserve funds. Um, is there any money left in our fund? Um, I believe that there is, yes, but we would need to do an accounting of that. And certainly we still have, as you all know, some outstanding requests that wouldn't include this. But, but these are the types of projects that we have reserve funds for. So I don't have heartburn at all about, I mean, 29000 a day, and it'll be more than that. But it's not anything we can't do. So the, the motion, if you elect to make it, would be... Um, not only to modify the building, but to occupy it as well, to go ahead and give him and his staff permission to occupy the building. Okay, if there aren't any more questions, um, an affirmative motion would be, I make a motion to authorize community corrections to modify the former juvenile services building. So move. Commissioner Harris? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Commissioner Stottlemyre? Yes. Chair Dickinson? Yes. Thank you, Commissioners. Dustin, I, I appreciate your work on this. I appreciate your flexibility. I, I remember hiring you, and it's interesting, when we hire folks, you have a job description, and at the time it did not include um, anything about a juvenile detention center, juvenile services, and you have taken to it and you've done it incredibly well. Um, and I know we're all excited about, um, I guess I'm reluctant to speak for the commissioners. I believe they are excited about this transition and looking forward to making it happen. So thank you. Yeah, you bet. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to staff reports. Anything else, Jerry? Yeah, I do have a few things. Um, was in Wellsville, uh, would have been last Friday. That ambulance station is uh, looking good. Um, it's going up fast. Um, I know Joanna and Christy have been out there. I've got great pictures of it. She's working on a story that we'll post all over. Really excited about that. 
um, we had a discussion recently about the public works yard and where we left that was we were going to start potentially having discussions with the city, with the fair board about acquiring land. Um, I've made the decision to halt that for now. I want to explore further what that side out by the landfill looks like. I mean, there, there's no doubt it would be more expensive, but when you look at it over 10, 15, 20 years, what's better for the future growth of the city of Ottawa, it's at least something that, that I want to diligently explore. I certainly will give Dave the opportunity to speak, but I believe he feels the same way. Um, there are a lot of just innate restrictions with our current site, things that just can't be changed, whereas if it were feasible to design a brand new site and find a way to pay for it over time, then we at least want to explore that possibility. And I'll use that as a segue to talk about uh, the bipartisan infrastructure law. Uh, I've got a meeting next week with Bean and a woman that the state has hired to help walk organizations through all of this. I intend to really delve into that over the next year. I don't know whether or not we could swing using some of those funds for something like that, but I'm certain that we could use some of it to do old 50. And if we were able to get some of that money, then the old 50 money we could potentially reallocate. I just, there's a lot of money out there right now. And I could see us potentially getting some of that for this project. So I just, I say all of that to say I don't want to jump right into something and move quickly when, I mean, this is something that, you know, could reshape parts of the community. So I want to give it its, its due diligence. Any questions about any of that? It's just kind of scary. I just saw that Lenexa just is putting $74 million into an enforcement center, and I thought, well, wow, and we did an ambulance station for half a million. You know, I'm like, I know there's, it takes a lot of money, but uh, I also know that you are very diligent with our money, and yeah. so you aren't going to put us into anything that we're going to regret, so... Well, yeah, you all will make the decision to do it. Certainly, Absolutely. we're just doing due diligence right now. Yeah, I'm glad you're chasing other opportunities. And if we are fortunate enough to free that much that money up, uh, uh, it may seem like a windfall, but uh, I don't know. I just always get scared people put their spending hats on. Uh, just bridges alone. It's only one small aspect of what we do, but we have over 200 bridges. And if we replace two a year, which we don't, that would make the average bridge eventually 125 years old, so. Well, and, and if you take yourself back to 2019 or even February of 2020, that this notion that there would be, what is it now, billions of dollars worth of stimulus money that was coming down the pipe in the subsequent years, we couldn't have anticipated that. And we have no idea what the next few years are gonna look like, so. I just want to, it's why we don't move super fast unless we absolutely have to, because you never know what opportunities right around the corner. Right. I think that's all I have, Ian. Thank you. All right. Um, Sheriff, do you have anything this morning? Good morning. Um, I have shared with you guys before um, our, some of our staff development, professional development that we do. Um, with our supervisors, a big chunk of what our um, leadership development is there is through the FBI. Um, they have a th three-tier system um, for, for supervisors and, and then managers and executive. Um, and then there's a couple things above that, and I know that he loves it when I get up here and talk about him, but last week under Sheriff Laswell, um, attended the uh, Central States Law Enforcement Executive Development Seminar um, through the FBI. It's a week-long executive development um, course, and uh, it's a it's a high-level um, training. And it uh, he had been through a lot of the this topics that are there. Obviously, once you get to a certain level, a lot of those the, the, there's a lot of similarities in those trainings. But it there were some new new ideas for him, and then also. 
um, some refresher on some of the things that he had learned at, at other things. But those are, um, I think that those are important that, that we develop our staff and that, that doesn't stop. And uh, But I wanted to commend Under Sheriff Laswell for what, for his dedication to, to doing that. And that's how a way that we lead by example is that we go to the, we go to the training ourselves that we're trying to send people to. So um, that I'm I'm proud of our staff and proud of what Kyle was able to accomplish and get that done last week. So I'm sure he doesn't want to come up, but uh, <laughs> I, I, anyway, um, want to lead the group in a slow clap. Yeah, is, good? <laughs> <laughs> is that the reason we can? Yeah, he just I don't know. Huh? He, he's passed every time I've offered for him to come up and speak on our behalf. Huh? So, anyway, that's all I have. Unless you guys have questions for. I might mention something. Larry never mentioned it to the car show, but they reported to the rest of the club that their meetings with the county, city, law enforcement, and emergency management was the best year they've ever had for communication. And uh, uh, the people out here in the public don't know the extent that the city and the county goes to to, to prepare and to be ready for, we hope, never happen issues. But, uh, but I know they were, uh, the president and the vice president reported back to us after the meeting. This is one of the best years they've ever uh, meet, met with everybody and, uh, and work with them and then working with us, uh, making it a safe event. So yeah, I appreciate, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Also, on that, just so that you are aware of the, the links that we, that we go to, our staff doesn't get that we block off a time that they don't get to to take vacation times. They can't, you know, skip town on car show weekend because we know that it's going to take a lot of resources. As was mentioned, we uh, there's a, a lot of outside, a lot of agencies from outside of our county that come into work, and it does not sit right with us for us to call and ask for help from other people while we're sending all of our people away. So uh, we we do. We pull basically pull all of our resources together for it. And I would agree. We had a we had a really good uh, uh, planning year this year, and some of the changes and things that we've that we've talked with the club about implementing for next year. Um, that communication is already going well on that as well. So, I think I saw six six bicycles, uh, law enforcement out, or seven six or seven. But anyway, I was like, yeah, there's got to be. Outside agencies that are here, yep. so that's very yep. awesome. So yeah, we had a, we had a good turnout. We get very good support for that. So, oh, all right, thank, thank you. you. Uh, it have anything this morning? I was wondering if you'd say Dustin, which one of us. Well, I didn't know. What, I didn't want to say Dustin because I didn't want you both to be like deer in the headlights. So. <laughs> So I promised you a couple weeks ago I'd come and give a stack report on our countywide software project, and we have reached another milestone uh, the end of this last week on that, and have completed the majority of the go lives for the financial management or the core financial management uh, platform. So Jan and I yesterday with Betsy kind of started testing out our training processes because that's not something that we typically do for any of our departments is working on training. So we kind of went over to David's office and worked with Kelly of, of how we thought that should kind of work, look, got her working in the system and started to do things. She's going to provide some feedback so we can fine tune that. And next week, we're hoping to get out to the rest of the departments to start working on the first phase of training of how they're going to interact with that system. Uh, this first wave is primarily the processing piece. That is getting their invoices from their departments <coughs> to the clerks to get paid. Uh, then we'll come back and work how they're going to take money in and receive that in. Then once all that's flowing well, we'll come back out and work with more of the management side and the reporting and different things like that of digging into those. Uh, but we really did reach a significant milestone in completing these go lives. Um, one more go live with the core financials, and that's going to be payroll. That we're going to do that at the end of October, uh, and then we will be fully on the ERP Pro product. Um, I think you'll see we're going to be developing a lot through this over the next several months or even year or two. I think we're going to have to review a lot of what our processes are. We've made some decisions that we think is best for now. But as we start get, getting going and get feedback from other departments of what they like, what they don't like, we really have to evaluate this frequently. We did also start a conversation with our vendor of we want to start scheduling this time every two to three years with them of 
what type of things can we do now? We've got our hands around this. How can we change this? Or what new things is there to not let this fall behind and become outdated for us? Uh, we get updates and things like that, but we want to attack it from our processing standpoint and what can we do differently. So again, uh, this one is just about wrapped up. Hopefully in the next month or so, we're fully on the system using all the functions with that. There are some new functions that we have not had and, and Janet and I, because I think her phrase has been, we're drinking from the water hose right now. Uh, we're not pushing too heavily on that. Uh, that would be our project accounting. We're excited about what we've seen from that, but we are not working on, it's there and it's ready for us. We're not working on trying to roll it out to everybody yet. Uh, contracts management, grants management, those things are there. We're not quite ready. It's a feature we have not really used and we're going to get there, but we want to take care of those things right now that every department is using today, which is getting the bills in, getting them paid. Uh, I issued the first purchase order from the system last night and got that sent out to a vendor. So we are live, we are using it. So that was the main point of this. Um, <coughs> one thing that I think Janet kind of hit on a couple weeks ago was talking about some people's involvement in this. And she highlighted Marilyn Stevenson down at Treasurer's Office. And I don't want to take away from what Marilyn's done. She's done a terrific job. But what hasn't, I don't think, been relayed is the people behind Marilyn and the people behind me and the people behind Janet. You've heard about the three of us really stepping in on this, but you haven't heard about how Nikki Adela stepped in on bank rec and really kind of taken over that charge since she's responsible for it and her participation in that. You didn't hear about Beth Lewis stepping in whenever Marilyn was out for a period of time and continuing these meetings in her place. You haven't heard about what Betsy's done in Janet's office, keeping those daily functions running. Or Adam, I have essentially not been in my office for the last week, and Adam by himself has kept my office running. So I want to make sure the commission understands what these other staff people are doing while the three of us have been out as a face of this project. So still want to thank the commission for the support of this project, it's been great, but um, we're excited about where we're going. Well, and we're gonna have to, to continue to communicate and ask for grace because everything you just described and you did so, that was fantastic. It's gonna be that way for a couple years. I mean, we're gonna have to communicate with the public that there are from time to time gonna be service interruptions as we kind of make this segue. Um, but I'm, 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 I'm optimistic based on where we're at now that it's going to be a good transition. You all have done great. Um, Janet, I know you've explained this, but just for the commission and or the public, you talk about invoices and training. Can you explain just 30,000 feet how we do invoicing now versus what the software is going to allow us to do? So currently um, all the department heads send their invoices down to my office and Debbie, who will be retiring at the end of the week, the week <laughs> will be leaving. So it, I, I, although I don't want to lose Debbie, it's actually perfect timing that we're transitioning to this new system so everybody can learn a new process while we're, we'll be without Debbie and learning the process too. Um, but Debbie processes everyone's invoices um, from all the departments and she has to know all the vendors and she knows all the accounts. Um, no one, uh, everyone knows kind of their own little little bubble and they don't know it very extensively. They don't know about all the vendors at all because Debbie handles all of the vendors um, and it's, it's a big job for my office. Betsy handles it when Debbie's gone. Um, it is a huge job to get the check run process. Um, so now we're going to be pushing that out to the departments for them to manage their own things. And it's going to give those departments so much more information. Um, when we were training Kelly yesterday, she was very excited about um, being able to process all these things on her own, choose her vendors right there, um, get everything into the accounts that um, that she has, um, and then being able to see that immediate feedback, being able to click on those vendors and see, oh, I have these other outstanding payables. Oh, we've had these other payables in the previous months, and being able to make sure that she doesn't send an invoice twice, because that's something that Debbie and Betsy look at all the time. They're looking back to make sure that we're not paying um, invoices multiple times, like if something's crossed in the mail or something. Everybody's going to take ownership of them this themselves and it's going to be 
a learning process for everybody, but we're really excited about it. And when we talked to Kelly about it yesterday, Kelly was very excited about it. And Dustin talked about the project uh, accounting just briefly. Um, and we just hit the probably the hundred thousand foot view for Kelly yesterday. But what we did share with Kelly yesterday, she was really excited about that for reporting for our projects, especially the old 50 project, which we already um, set up in there as our first project in the system. And we really haven't even got to all the details of that and how we're going to be able to use that to get feedback. But it's a lot of a lot more reporting that we're going to be able to bring to you guys. We really haven't felt like in the past that we've had reports that we could bring to you guys quarterly and really show like what we're spending, what we're bringing in revenue wise. And that's something we're really excited that we're going to be able to, to do. And where Derek said and Dustin allude to that we're going to be growing in this. Um, we're kind of looking at these first three months, September, October, November, um, as like really getting our feet wet in this starting in January when we're a whole year, we're going to be starting a brand new whole year on the system. Um, we're really excited what that looks like for us and what we can, what we can bring to you guys, what the, what the public can, can see what it's going to bring. So lots more information. The last thing I would say and, and bear with me, I would just be remiss if I didn't, um, and this is kudos to Dustin, to Janet, to Marilyn. So the vendor we are using, um, Tyler, it's, it's, very, it's a progressive vendor. There is another vendor out there um, that most other organizations have been using that none of them are happy with that would have been a safety net. I mean, Janet could have said at any point, I want to use this vendor because that's what the other clerks use. And, and it would have been easier. There's more, but it, it wouldn't have been better. I mean, this, this vendor is growing. They, they are going to allow us to do so much more. There are counties, I, Johnson and Douglas, correct, mm -hmm. primarily use Tyler. I believe, just like with the radio system, more and more counties will start transitioning to Tyler. But we are very much on the front edge of that. And that takes courage. And, and courage is hard. And so appreciate Dustin and Janet and Marilyn and everyone else, um, Amy and Christina, that's been involved in this. Because that's it's what we describe ourselves as, is we want to be progressive. We want to be leaders. And this is a great example of that in action. So really proud of that group. Dustin, get, Dustin and I both have had other counties reach out to us and, and request that. Just, just last week, I had another county send me an email and say, hey, I heard you guys were doing something different. Um, we're going through a transition and we're looking at something different. What are you doing? Can you send us your contact point? So, I mean, more than just like, what are you doing? They're asking us for our contact points and they're um, wanting to, to see what we're doing. And um, there is another county that is on the financial management, which we just transitioned to. They're looking at this project past our financial management because they're interested in the tax portion of it because they don't currently currently have the tax portion, so they want to see how that transition goes, and we're going to be moving towards that um, next year. We'll be going live with that in about the June time frame, so um, just we're kind of building on all these things, as Dustin said, you know, so we're not diving in all at once, although we are diving in all at once, but we're moving each piece on at a different time. We get to see little bits and pieces of it, and it's exciting. It really is yeah, I think, where we're going. I think once we get to next summer, whenever we are fully implemented on all these, there's still going to be a lot of transition that we have on learning to do. But uh, in that May-June time frame is when our last piece should be live and we should be on board. I think at that point, or hopefully within about six months from that point, we can step back and get that 30,000-foot view of all these different pieces. 
because uh, I didn't mention it today because we've covered enough times. We've done pub works for David's area. We've done field appraisal for Jamie's area. We've done Fiddler for Vicky's area. Now we've just completed financial management. We still got the permitting and licensing coming up in the first quarter of 24, and then we've got the assessment and tax collection piece coming. So I think once those are all done and we're hopefully able to take a breath and settle in a little bit, we can take a step back and look at all this that we've just completed over the last couple of years and really start seeing the direction and what these are doing for us and the reports that we're able to go ahead and do through a budget cycle and see um, how these trends are actually happening a little bit e more easily than what we've been able to do and, and start getting those rewards, which is what we talked to you guys about when we first presented this was the efficiencies that we we're going to gain and, and all these new capabilities that we could have in, in budget prep and all these functions. And I'm, I'm looking forward to that day uh, more than where we're currently at. But anyway, I wanted to give you guys an update. I'll stand for any questions and just thank the commission for their continued support on this project. Thank you. All right, thank you. Joanne, do you have anything this morning? All right. Dustin, do you have anything else? All right. We'll move on to David Lee. Public Works. They've said it a couple of times here, but Kelly really is excited. She left that training uh, uh, ready to go, and, and she's already using the software. So uh, really excited about that. Uh, the, the property out by the landfill, we've already started taking a look at um, really just trying to sketch some things out. But uh, at some point, we'll... we'll uh, have something that, that we might be able to present and, and really talk about. And then the last thing that I've got, uh, we received uh, the quotes for the in -dump trucks that we uh, uh, were soliciting quotes from several vendors. Um, still asking some clarifying questions on, on some of that, but I'm really, really happy with uh, at least one of the prices that we've gotten. Um, and hope to bring that to you probably on October 11th. I'll be at a conference next week, but um, uh, we'll come with you to a, with a recommendation on how to proceed with that. So, um, I know that when we discussed that, we were talking about four, but then we thought about the possibility of breaking it up and doing two, which is still very much on the table. But if what David uh, believes is is accurate, and I believe it is. That's what he's clarifying on price. It may be such that we want to look at at three or four because don't it's, want to pass an opportunity just to stick with the plan. That's exactly right. Yeah, so, it, it, it could turn out to be a significant savings. Yep. So, don't hurt that word, Wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, in this case, it happens to be about timing and us piggybacking on a on a much larger order and, and gotcha. realizing those savings. Hope it works out. Yes. Looks like the uh, chip seal project's about done with a big strike. Yeah. So uh, the chip seal project is completely done. Uh, painting finished up uh, yesterday. Um, I believe it was yesterday or the day before, but they are done. Uh, I've driven. Oh, about half of it, um, and it looks, the paint uh, is uh, mostly good. There, there's a couple of spots that I think could have been done a little better, but overall, I'm really happy with the entire project. And you're, I'm, you, I'm kind of thinking about you like Dustin. He didn't, wasn't, he didn't know he was going to get into the juvenile. You didn't know you were going to get into possibly a whole new project over there, but you're the right person for it, I think, because you are the... You are the numbers person. You are the one that can put this together if it does happen. Yeah, uh, you know the things that you know the 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 landfill area. Um, uh, it makes a lot of sense if we're really thinking really long term uh, to analyze that. It's it's worth going through that exercise to uh, get getting rough cost estimates and and having. A uh, general plan in place. Um, I don't think that the type of construction that we would uh, consider is quite what I think it was Lenexa or someplace that you mentioned. <laughs> We're not talking those kind of facilities, but uh, certainly something that uh, will suit our needs for generations to come is kind of what we're looking at. Um, the, 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 the software that they mentioned, you know, I, I do like numbers. I, I'd like to take a deep dive. Uh, Kelly has um, spent a lot of time crawling around in old boxes looking for receipts and this and that, that that I need to be able to put information together. 
Super excited to have that information eventually at my fingertips. Anytime I want, I can call that up through the, the new software. So all of those things are exciting to me. The BIL, uh, certainly uh, if there is an avenue for us to leverage those dollars, uh, it makes sense to, to, to look at that hard. KDOT, the state has recently done some things that make that you know, uh, not an impossibility uh, for a county like ours. So Derek taking a look at that I think is, is wonderful and, and uh, if it pays off, it'll pay off in a big way. So definitely all of these things are really exciting to be a part of. Janet. Just one quick addition. Um, I just want to let you guys know that Debbie's retirement um, gathering will be on Friday from 2 to 4 in the clerk's office. So just invite you guys to stop by and celebrate Debbie's 20 years with us and um, wish her well in her retirement. Commissioner reports, Don. Uh, and then I'll be attending Wellsville meeting tonight. I was up in Kansas City Tuesday, so I stopped by the ambulance. And they're, they're installing the heating and cooling. It's come along quick. The overhead doors are in, windows are in, the doors are in, the heating and cooling's going in. So they've got it to the point now, rain or shine, they're going to be working. You know, so it's, I think it's going to move along really quick. Uh, it's amazing that to go in there and uh, there's a lot of room in that building. I mean, you know, it's amazing that, you know, to get it up now. And, and uh, how much room there's really going to be. I think it's a real future type building. You know, we're not going to, once we're done, I think none of us are ever going to have to, unless it's a remodel or something somewhere down, but I don't even see that. You know, I think it's just something we're going to have for the rest of our time, you know. Um, also, uh, my report on uh, the housing project is going like crazy too. Things over there, there's the street thrust and they're moving along, they're getting ready to put in the house right there, back in there. So, so that's moving along really good too. So that's all I got. I said one thing. Uh, I think we are. We're contacting about the Veterans uh, War Memorial. The uh, Franklin County honors people want to uh, redo the shrubs and maybe put flowers or something around there and I don't, don't know if anybody has any problem with that. They want to redo it and make it a little nicer. I, uh, I think I, I think you're bringing that up because that's something that should have been. Basically they just want to plant some flowers and they don't want to have to come in and ask permission every time they want to plant flowers but if they do anything else they'll come before us so uh, we can let them know that that's fine before the we probably need to orchestrate that through Brandon so that he knows yeah. when folks yeah, are yeah, yeah. But I'm happy to talk to him about it. Okay. That's all I have. Okay. Uh, I need to take up our time with. I only had a couple of meetings last week. Both of them um, had a program by Spark Wheel that used to be the community and schools program. And, and when you talk about it takes a village, um, that's part of our village because they really are. Um, stepping up for kids that might slip through the cracks. Um, they're not necessarily going to end up on our juvenile detention system, but, you know, they're kids that need a little bit more support than they might get um, at home or um, just need that extra little um, support. So that was a good program. A couple of times, the FC, at the FCDC meeting um, that you might put on your calendar, the quarterly meeting, uh, business meeting is going to be at the Wellsville High School in October, and then the annual meeting is going to be back at Ottawa High School, I believe, sometime in November. I don't have the dates, but just kind of put those in your head that you, if you are interested in attending, um, that would be something to look forward to. And otherwise, I don't think we have anything else to come before the commission, so entertain. Second. All right, I'll move. All right. <laughs>